In this video, we'll be finding the area of the region bounded by the y-axis. The problem that we'll be doing is find the area of the region bounded by the graph of f of y equals y squared and the y-axis for y between 0 and 1 inclusive. Now this may be the first time you've seen this notation, so let's take a look at that first. Usually we see f of x equal, and then our expression is in terms of x. Because this is f of y equals, that means that this left side could be replaced by x. And then the right side is in terms of y. So these two equations are the same thing. Now normally also when we graph a function, we graph y equals some expression. And so if we work this out and took the square root of both sides, we would see that this is y equals plus or minus square root of x. Now the graph of y equals square root of x, the function looks like this. And because it's plus or minus, that means that we have a parabola that opens to the right when I have y equals plus or minus square root of x or y squared is equal to x. So that's this graph is this equation. So when we're graphing f of y equals y squared for y between 0 and 1 inclusive, all we want to do is graph this top part. So let's make that just a little bit bigger. All right. Now, because we're in Y, we're going to um, change our representative rectangle. And by the way, we're doing the graph is one of the boundaries and the axis is the other boundary. We're looking at the area of this region, not this region. So our representative rectangle is going to be horizontal rather than vertical. And where we would normally find delta x with a vertical rectangle, we're going to be finding delta y. That's our change in y, which is the width of this little rectangle. Right. So um, we're, the process is still the same. Our first step is to divide the interval into n rectangles. And the way we do that is we take the top boundary and subtract the lower boundary and divide by n. So delta y is equal to 1 over n, and let's say that for when we need it. Then our next step is to find the value in the ith rectangle.
So that would be y sub i equals, I need the lower boundary, which is 0, plus i delta y. And so the expression that we'll save for use in our problem is i, and then in place of delta y, we have 1 over n, or y sub i equals i over n. So let's save this. So the area of our region between the y-axis and the graph of the function, so the shaded area, will be the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation of all of the rectangles. i is going from 1 to n. The length of the rectangle is f of y sub i, and the width of the rectangle is delta y. So let's fill in the information that's specific to our problem. The area will be limit as the summation goes from i to n. f of yi means I'm filling in yi into this function. So I have y squared, and then yi is i over n. So this is my length of my rectangle, and then multiply that by delta y, which is 1 over n. All right, now we just need to do the math. Well, I think I'm going to square this in here since it's uh, very simple. Limit as n approaches infinity. Summation as i goes from 1 to n. Uh, when I square this fraction, I get i squared over n squared. And then that's multiplied by 1 over n. So I have limit as n approaches infinity of the summation as i goes from 1 to n of i squared over n cubed. Now, to, before I can put my formula in, anything that does not have an i in it, I need to take in front of the summation. So this is limit as n approaches infinity of n, 1 over n cubed is what I'll bring out in the front. And then my summation is i squared. So our formula on this one The formula for i squared is that long one. So we have n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Now I can simplify a little bit here. This will be a 1 and this will be an n squared. So I'm finding the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n squared plus 3n plus 1, and then my denominator is 6n squared.
Okay. Let's separate these into three fractions and then find the limit. So 2n squared over 6n squared is 1 third. 3n over 6n squared is 1 over 2n. And 1 over 6n squared won't simplify. And we know that um, when we take the limit of a fraction, if the variable is in the denominator, as that approaches infinity, the whole fraction is going to go towards zero. So this one and this one both go towards zero. So my area of my region is one third.